So growing up, breakfast generally looks something like this. Get out of bed, head over to the pantry, pick out my favorite cereal, cover with milk, and enjoy. And although it was delicious, I might as well have just injected an IV of sugar straight into the veins. And I'm guessing a lot of you, especially the millennials, share a similar experience because our parents, being the post-war baby boomers, I kind of look at that generation as like the dark ages of home cooking. Really the first generation to just let factories and corporations completely take over the pantries and the refrigerators. And now we're here kind of left uh, reversing this generational food trauma, but I think it's so important to get ourselves and our families off to a really good start. And that's what this video is all about. I'm gonna be showing you four of my favorite breakfast options that are really fail safe. They're customizable, they are nutritious, they're easy to make, and I guarantee no matter what age you are, everyone in your family will like these breakfast options. So I think it's funny that there was a time in my cooking career that I really wanted to be respected for my skills in the kitchen. And now I spend my days making muffins. <laughs> but let me tell you, when it comes to feeding yourself and your family, being able to make a good baked good is kind of an essential skill. And I have tried hundreds of different muffins, different recipes over the years. I always come back to this one because it is so just uh, all purpose and it's filled with goodness and to me it's just a perfect muffin to have for breakfast or really throughout the day. And bakers are huge sticklers for ripe bananas, like overly ripe bananas, the ones that are fully darkened. But how often do you actually have bananas like this? Honestly, I always just bake with normally ripe bananas and it's totally fine. And I know what you're thinking, you can throw them in the oven, you can do it manually. These are everyday muffins, I don't have time for that. So I'm gonna mash up these bananas until they're nice and creamy, add two eggs, half a cup of yogurt, which I love because one, it's fermented, but this is also the best hack to get your muffins super soft. Then for the fat, I'm using two tablespoons of coconut oil and I'm gonna microwave that to melt it. And then that goes into the muffins, which is gonna get them super moist. And since the coconut oil is a little hot and fat separates, I'm just gonna slowly whisk that in to really emulsify everything together. And then your sweetness level is really customizable to your liking and taste. I'm going in with two sweeteners. First, a quarter cup of coconut sugar, and then two tablespoons of maple syrup. And then these right here are my base wet ingredients. Now the dry ingredients is where things get pretty customizable. I'm just going in my pantry to see what type of flowers I have and making some type of customizable mix of them all. And for these muffins, I have some spelt flour, some gluten-free flour, and a little bit of oat flour. And I'm just gonna start off with a third of a cup of each. And then I'll go in with one teaspoon of baking soda and I'll whisk everything up until it forms a batter. So this is where you want to adjust since I kind of freestyle the flour ratios. Sometimes it's perfect. Most of the time it's not. This I would say is a little closer to pancake batter and we want a little more of that cake batter. So all I'm going to do is just add a little bit more of this oat flour, which should bring me up to the perfect consistency. There we go. A little thicker there. Now what I love about muffins is you throw them in the oven, we're gonna set this for usually around 18 to 20 minutes, especially with gluten-free flour. That takes a little longer to cook through than regular flour. And now in the mornings for me, I'm on to prepping something else. I'm making lunch, I'm making dinner for later. And I'm telling you, the more you make these muffin recipes, it's just gonna become second nature. You won't need any recipe. You'll just become pretty much a master. And I'm so good at making them that this whole mess right here, it's clean by the time they're in the oven. That's how efficient I am. I'm just filming right now. so that's that is not the case. All right, so we are two minutes out and I do like to just check in on these. See, they got a nice puff there. Baking is never an exact recipe because everyone's oven is different, ingredients are different. So I'm looking to be over 200. So clearly, I mean, right inside. We'll go back in, probably needs another two minutes. You want a sustainable muffin option for breakfast. It's gotta have quality ingredients and it can't be too sweet. And this, for my family, hits the spot for everyone, kids and adults.
You can never underestimate the power of oats, my friends, especially for the cost. It's very rare that I don't have an entire bag sitting in my pantry somewhere. There's just so many uses, especially when it comes to breakfast food. And I am gonna show you a recipe that is just a twist on oatmeal because oatmeal can get boring, but everyone in my family does like oatmeal. So you gotta think of creative ways to expand and keep it fresh. And that's what this apple pie inspired oatmeal is going to accomplish. All I'm gonna do is take one apple give it a peel. And as you can see, I kind of peel apples like a barbarian, but it's gonna get the job done. And the apple skin is going to the chickens and I will slice up these apples into just small little pieces. The smaller the better, cause it's gonna cook quicker. Now I'm gonna get a saucepan on a medium heat and I'll just add one tablespoon of butter. I'll add in my apples and just slowly start cooking them down. And what I'm basically doing here is creating apple pie flavors without the epic amount of calories. I'll cook the apples for about three minutes till they're soft and then I'll start adding my flavor. Up first, I'll go in with a little hit of cinnamon. It's about one to two tablespoons of honey, which is actually optional. You can go completely sugar-free, a little bit of vanilla, but this is just a nice seasoning to really amplify everything. And I'll just cook that down for another minute. Now I'm using whole grain thick cut oats. So I'm gonna cook these according to this specific type, but not all oats are created equally. So you're gonna have to find your own ratios and cooking times. I'm gonna dump in one mug full and for my base liquid, I'm going with some homemade almond milk, which by the way, if you get really serious about producing your own breakfast foods, like every day, having one of these masticating style juicers might be worth the investment just to make homemade nut milks. Here I just soak some almonds in water overnight till they hydrate. And then I'll just run it through the machine with a bunch of water and you've got this creamy fresh almond milk, which is at least five, maybe six, maybe seven, probably 10 times better than store-bought almond milk. And you don't need that many almonds to make like a good bit of it. I'll even save that almond meal and throw it in muffins and other baked goods so nothing goes to waste. And I use my first juicer to make so much juice and also nut milks that I actually just burned it out over the course of probably seven years. So yes, for me, well, well worth the investment. And I'm going with a two to one liquid to oats ratio. And since this almond milk is so precious, I'm only gonna do one mug full of the almond milk and then just a mug full of water and you're still gonna get a delicious flavor. And then on a medium heat, it's just about slowly cooking that down, thickening up those oats, getting that right consistency. Since these are thick cut oats, it's gonna take a little bit longer, probably around seven to 10 minutes total on a low heat. So this, consistency right here is what I'm going for. And oats will dramatically thicken up as they cool. So you always want to go a little more liquidy to cover your a little bit because by the time it hits the plate, whatever you're serving it for, it's going to be thicker than what's in this pot. Quick taste. That is amazing. Very little sweetness. Think about that additional honey as just a mild seasoning to kind of amplify the apples. Obviously you could sprinkle a bunch of berries over that. Customize it however you want. But I know for me and my family, oatmeal is a go-to because everyone likes it. And the great thing about oatmeal is that, you know, at its core, this is mush, this is baby food. This is amplified baby food that's actually good. So of course everyone's gonna like it. So all of you know that I'm a big proponent of seasonal eating. It's probably been the biggest shift in my lifestyle and my cooking over the last decade or so. And I'm very excited to partner with Seed on this video to celebrate Digestive Health Month. Because as humans, over time with the rise of technology, we've slowly disconnected from those natural seasonal shifts that our body would have gone through. And we now have scientific research to show that that might not be the best thing. And I've experienced this firsthand. I used to think in the winter time, without the access to just an abundance of fresh produce, that I would just feel a little worse. But when I started eating more seasonally, which meant eating more preserved and fermented things in the winter, I actually started feeling great in the winter, even with a lack of all of this fresh produce. But of course we do live in the modern world and it's not realistic to just completely be off grid and fully connected to the seasons. Which is why I've personally been taking Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic for the last 
two years. Since I don't have a perfect diet, getting those probiotics is just gonna give me that little extra digestive balance and support that I'm looking for. And it actually has, and it's the reason why it's the only probiotic that I trust on the market. Because it has the prebiotic outer shell, it acts as a barrier as it travels through your body to really get the probiotics to where they need to be. So they can actually go to work balancing your microbiome and you can feel better. And all of you right now can take advantage of Seed's spring seedling event by using code PROHOMECOOKS to save 40% off your first month supply of Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. All right, so speaking of seasonal cooking, time we take a little trip for this next, actually the next two recipes. And we're making eggs, which is kind of like the life force of my house. So many <laughs> eggs go into the breakfast that I am making, which is why a lot of you know that I have invested in some new little girls. There's one over there. The rest of them generally have been hanging out. Oh, where are they? Are they all in here? Interesting. I don't know why they're hiding right now. But the chicks are integrating pretty nicely with the older girls, so that is very exciting. But we are here for those babies. And we will continue on our journey. To celebrate spring popping off in the garden, look at this beautiful sight. We're gonna be making a green garlic scramble because I have all of this garlic growing. And if you pull it out right now, ugh, this looks just like a scallion or a green onion, but it's actually just young garlic, or they call it green garlic, not fully developed. It's slightly more mild than garlic, but makes an incredible aromatic, just like a green onion. I'll pull one more of these. Oh, nice. Looking good. I've got a few of these young onions. I just need one of these. And then finally, this bed of greens. I'm gonna be taking a little bit of spinach and some kale for the fourth recipe. Oh yeah, there's also a little bit of parsley over there that I will snatch for these eggs. And that should do it. So of course all of you know how to make scrambled eggs, but since having kids, I make scrambled eggs maybe every other day. And I feel like I've gotten really good from just repetition. So maybe, just maybe, you'll learn a thing or two. All right, so things are gonna happen quick. I'm gonna get this pan preheating. Just on a medium low. This is an eight inch carbon steel from Sardell. One of my favorites for eggs. One spring onion, one green garlic, washed. I just need the white bulbier part. And give these to the compost or give the chickens or garnish. And I'm guessing most of you don't have green garlic. So you should just double up on the scallion. And I'll just slice right through that. That's our aromatic flavor. Little bit of olive oil, little butter for flavor. And I'll get some color on my aromatics. Boom. In the meantime, we crack our eggs. One, two, three, four. The young girls aren't laying yet. These are just from the older chickens. Scramble. Done. Chop up this little bit of parsley for garnish. And then I'll have some cheese nearby. This is, I think, some goat gouda, but you can use, of course, anything. All right, so our aromatics have softened. We've developed some nice color. I'm gonna just turn up the heat a little bit. I like scrambling hot and fast. Make sure there's enough fat in your pan so nothing sticks. And then dump in your eggs. I'll let them just fry up for a second, and then I'll start mixing. Look at these beautiful strands. Not sticking at all, as you can see. And now once it's mixed up, I'll just let it cook for a second. We're gonna hit it with a little bit of salt. Boom, boom, boom. We can actually turn the heat off. A Little bit of pepper, because there's plenty of residual heat to cook this. Parsley, and then your cheese, which is just gonna melt in with the residual heat. And then honestly, it can just kind of give it a flip. And those are done. And we wanna get them out of the pan before they overcook. You've got a nice mix of some moist spots that are a little more underdone, some crispier spots, kind of different textures, which I like. I can tell you one thing, my oldest daughter, she's not gonna eat like super soft eggs. It's just not gonna happen. Oh my God. Kind of tastes like an omelet, to be honest, with all these ingredients. And I'm totally fine with that. It's kind of like a scrambled omelet. So making an omelet without the precision, which is totally fine when you just need to put some breakfast on the table. 
Now, if all else fails and you really just don't want to make anything intensive in the morning, I'll just blend up a smoothie, which is still a great way to at least get into the game and to connect to a homemade nutritious breakfast. But I will say smoothie making to me is like a culinary endeavor, I'm not just throwing a bunch of into a smoothie. I'm actually trying to balance flavors. So this is drinkable goodness. That's the only way you're going to keep drinking smoothies. And I've got three main categories here, your veggies and this case kale and spinach from my garden but you can throw in other veggies as well we've got our fruit i've got some frozen peaches and strawberries plus some fresh fruit you can balance the two mango banana and then your filler in this case yogurt and some of that homemade almond milk i've left over and remember balance is key so i know since i have a lot of sweetness i can go pretty heavy on the greens and right here is the reason why smoothies are on every top 10 mommy blogger make your kids list because you can sneak them in not many kids are gonna love munching on some raw kale, but they'll taste good blended up. Just slice just a cheek off that mango and fillet it off. Fillet. Half a banana, a few frozen strawberries, and a few frozen peaches. My smoothies change every single day, depending on what I have. Balance is key. Just like two scoops of yogurt, and then some of that almond milk. Use any milk you have. I'll go all. And we will start to blend. My kids will usually split one and then I'll just ration the rest off for me and Sasha. Now, sometimes I will make a juice with that same masticating blender I made the almond milk in, but juice is much more extensive and I like it more as a treat because you don't get the full fiber from a smoothie. That's actually a good drink. And over the years, I've dabbled with the powders, the cordyceps and the proteins and the green powders. I'm just too much of like a cook at heart. They throw off the flavors and I don't like that. And hopefully this video provided just a little bit of extra motivation to get in the kitchen and start the day off right. So then the rest of our day can be good as well. It all starts in the morning with breakfast. That's pretty much it. You like the purple smoothie? Yeah.